What's going on everyone, Golden Ticket to History, coming to you today with another podcast episode. This time we're diving into the story of Eddie Lee Mosley. Eddie Lee Mosley, born on March 31st, 1947, and died on May 20th, 2020, was an American serial killer and rapist who murdered at least eight women in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, between 1973 and 1987. He was arrested in 2001 following the results of a DNA profiling test after being the prime suspect in several murders for many years. Before his arrest, two other men were wrongly convicted of several murders later attributed to Mosley. Frank Lee Smith, who spent 15 years in prison and died behind bars before he could be exonerated, and Jerry Townsend, who spent 22 years in prison before being released. Mosley's true victim count is unknown, with authorities speculating that he committed at least 16 murders and dozens of rapes. Eddie Mosley was born on March 31st of 1947 as the third of ten children of a Fort Lauderdale family. Complications during his birth later led to him developing an acute respiratory disease as a child causing him a slew of issues. In addition, from an early age, he began to show signs of an intellectual disability and mental instability, having problems learning and experiencing anterior grade amnesia, because of which he repeated his second year of school, elementary school several times. In 1960, at the age of 13, Eddie was forced to leave school for good as a third-grade student. During his teenage years, he lived in poor conditions and began to show signs of an antisocial personality disorder. Owing to a lack of formal education, he was forced to engage in low-skilled labor, but soon, due to financial difficulties, he turned towards crime. Since 1965, he had been arrested nine times on various charges, including indecent behavior, robbery, assault, attempted rape, and murder, for which he spent five and a half years in prison and almost six in various psychiatric wards. In the period between November of 1971 and July of 1973, almost 150 rapes of girls and women were recorded in the northwestern part of Fort Lauderdale. In all cases, the perpetrator was described as a young, tall black man with an athletic build and a scar on his left cheek whom under the threat of a physical violence lured them to wasteland and other isolated areas where he choked and sexually abused the victims. On July 23rd of 1973, three rape victims identified Mosley as their assailant, who due to his physique and tall stature well matched the composite of the rapist. After his arrest, his photographs were shown to other victims resulting in more than 40 women identifying him as the rapist. During this period, Eddie was also the prime suspect in the rape murders of two black girls in Fort Lauderdale, killed early in 1973. But since there was not enough evidence, he was only charged with the assaults and subsequent rape. However, following a mental evaluation, he was found to be insane and was ordered involuntary commitment at the Florida State Hospital, where he spent five years during his imprisonment. No other similar rapes or murders were recorded. On February 1st, 1979, Mosley was transferred to the South Florida State Hospital in Pembroke Pines. After completing a five-month treatment course in the summer of that year, he was deemed cured, no longer a danger to society, and was released, but had to continue his treatment on an outpatient basis by visiting a psychiatrist at the Henderson Mental Health Clinic in southwest Fort Lauderdale. After his release, Eddie moved back into his parents' house. Over the next seven months, seven girls were found raped and murdered in the area. All the murders were committed in the vicinity of Mosley's home, and he quickly became the prime suspect. In early 1980, fearful of the increased attention of law enforcement upon him, he left the city and moved to Lakeland, where his grandmother lived. Not long after, he became the prime suspect in the disappearance of two girls, Ida Eagles and Letha May Williams, who went shortly after his arrival. Mosley was arrested and subsequently interrogated, but was released as the victims' bodies could not be located. He returned to Fort Lauderdale, where on April 12, 1980, he was arrested while attempting to rape a young girl. He was found guilty and sentenced to 15 years imprisonment. While Mosley was in prison, the skeletal remains of Eagles and Williams were discovered near Lakeland. While incarcerated at the Broward County Jail, Eddie exhibited very aggressive behavior, often physically and sexually harassing other prisoners, and on one occasion even confronting the guards and threatening to set the place ablaze. His family later hired a lawyer who filed an appeal to overturn his verdict in a new trial. Citing the incompetence of Mosley's previous lawyer, who hadn't filed for a psychological eva- examination of his client, the appellate court found significant flaws in the procedures and would eventually overturn the conviction. At the new trial, the court took into account the mitigating factors in representing Mosley to a shorter prison sentence, 
since he had spent more than three years in prison by that time. On December 15th of 1983, he was paroled following a court decision. In January of 1984, Mosley came under police suspicion again after the bodies of 36-year-old Geraldine Barfield and 54-year-old Emma Cook were found in northwestern Fort Lauderdale, raped and subsequently killed by suffocation. On May 17, 1984, he was arrested for raping a 22-year-old woman. At trial, he pleaded not guilty, claiming that the sexual intercourse had been with a mutual agreement. His lawyers managed to successfully portray the rape as consensual sex, in which Mosley had promised the victims drugs, and in October of that same year, Mosley was acquitted and released after committing two more murders in the vicinity of Fort Lauderdale and the Broward County Sheriff's Office. Contacted the FBI, which based on provided data compiled an offender profile, which was very consistent with Eddie Mosley's. In the spring of 1987, Mosley came under police scrutiny again for the February 24th rape and strangulation of 24-year-old Synthrell Love. On May 17, 1987, Mosley was arrested for theft. By that time, his blood group was matched with the semen samples taken from the bodies of the murder victims and was found to be a match. In interrogations, Eddie showed evidence of his involvement in numerous crimes committed over almost two decades, all committed in the city or near his home. Faced with detailed descriptions of where the bodies were found, their names and descriptions, Mosley tried to make up an alibi, but began to mess up his testimony, getting dates and geographical data and even seasons wrong. In the end, he confessed to the murders of Teresa Giles and Emma Cook, with which he was charged. His trial began on July 22, 1987, with a number of sex workers working at the Fort Lauderdale Red Light District testifying that Mosley had repeatedly demonstrated aggressive behavior towards women in front of crowds of witnesses. Based on various tests, the defendant's IQ was measured at 51 points, below the average intelligence rate. Because of this, it was ruled that he was incompetent to stand trial, and on October 23rd, he was sentenced to compulsory treatment at the Florida State Hospital. For the remainder of his life, Mosley was shuffled between various clinics and mental institutions in the state. In 2000, samples of his saliva and blood were taken for DNA testing, which proved his guilt in the following murders. 29-year-old Loretta Young Brown, killed in 1984. 34-year-old Veda Turner, killed on July 9, 1973. 13-year-old Sanja Yvette Marion, killed in July of 1979. 21-year-old Terry Jean Cummings, found dead in August of 1979. And finally, the murders of Emma Cook and Teresa Giles, to which he confessed in May of 1987. In addition, he was connected to the April 1985 murders of eight young, of eight-year-old Sandra Whitehead who had been raped and killed in her home. Another Fort Lauderdale man, 38-year-old Frank Lee Smith, who had was in, also intellectually disabled, was convicted of her murder. In 1960, at the age of 13, Smith killed 14-year-old John Wesley Spahn, but was released from custody in the mid-1960s, only to be later charged with the shooting death of 38-year-old Herbert DeWitt in 1966, who was killed during a robbery. He pleaded guilty to that murder and was sentenced to life in prison, but released on parole in 1981. In 1985, April, he was arrested and charged with killing Sandra after the girl's mother wrongfully identified him as the killer, based on solely on a photograph she had been shown. Despite the lack of physical evidence linking him to the crime, Smith was found guilty and sentenced to death in 1986. From the beginning, he claimed his innocence in the killing. He died on death row on January 30th of 2000. From cancer-related complications only months before the DNA test proved his innocence. Mosley was also charged with the murder of 15-year-old Naomi Gamble, that pr thus proving the innocence of 49-year-old Jerry Frank Townsend, who was arrested in Miami in 1979 on charges of raping a girl. After his arrest, he confessed to killing Gamble as well as five other girls and women among them, Barbara Brown, killed in Broward County in 1973, and Shanja Yvette Marion. The charges against Townsend were later dropped, and he was released on, July, on June 15th of 2001 after spending 22 years behind bars. Like Eddie Mosley, Townsend had been diagnosed as intellectually disabled from a young age. Aside from his proven murders, the investigators tried to connect Mosley to other murders among them, with that of 24-year-old Santrell Lowe, 19-year-old Arnett Tooks, killed on February 22nd of 1980, 21-year-old Susan Boynton, killed in December of 1979, and 16-year-old Gloria Irving, found murdered in 1980. However, Mosley's and the killer's DNA were not deemed to be masked, matched. Despite this, he hasn't been excluded from the list of suspects. After establishing his guilt, the Fort Lauderdale police issued an arrest warrant for Mosley. 
However, according to the results of two independent psychiatric tests conducted at the end of 2001, Moser was again declared insane and thus couldn't be imprisoned. Over the years of in treatment, he earned a reputation as an exemplary patient with never disciplined and acted friendly toward management and staff members. As a result of this, in the late 1990s, he was transferred to the low-risk unit and was allowed to leave the hospital under supervision of staff so he could make purchases in a nearby Walmart. In the 2010s, due to his ailing health, Eddie Mosley was transferred to the Sunland Center in Mariana. In the spring of 2020, he was diagnosed with pneumonia and moved to the Jackson Hospital in Mariana, where he died on May 28th of 2020. At the age of 73, shortly before his death, he tested positive for COVID-19, which was later listed as the cause of death. Hopefully you enjoyed learning about this, this case that happened here in the state of Florida. If you've enjoyed this video, definitely look into subscribing to the channel. And as always, continue to look for the history and film. and look forward to covering another topic with you guys in a future episode. Have a great day, everyone.